In this video we're going to demonstrate how to calculate reference crop ET from weather data using a macro embedded in an Excel spreadsheet. So this greatly simplifies the calculations. So I'm going to start here with a spreadsheet that has the formulas already embedded. It's called Ref ET Macro uh, Daily. And this one happens to be version 3.2016, but you know might have a slightly different name uh, depending on what I've posted. But this is the one that you want. If you go over to the Developer tab and hit Visual Basic, you can actually get a look at the macro. Uh, here it is, the actual code that's being used. These should these formulas should match up with the ASCE formulas from the 2005 document by Allen et al. So um, this is what's sort of going on under the hood, but to just use the spreadsheet, you really don't need to worry about this too much unless you want to make some modifications. So I'm going to close that. Back to the spreadsheet, I need to download some weather data. So I'm going to go over to CoAgMet like we've done in the past. In this case, I'm going to download data from Greeley uh, and uh, in 2012 going from May 1st, 2012 to September 30th, 2012 for GLY04. It's the station. And I'm going to hit Submit. I want only want daily data. And there it is. Control-A to select it. Control-C to copy it to the clipboard. Back to the spreadsheet. Go up to this cell, A2. Control-V. Paste it in. It's like we've done in the past, go to the Data tab, Text to Columns, it's delineated, so we want to go over here, we want both Comma and Tab selected, Finish, and there comes our data. Alright, so now we have the data, and we're ready to calculate Reference ET. Now, I've created some extra columns here. One's called day of year, one's called wind, and one's called ETR. This is what we're after right here, actual reference crop. And I also made this little um, reminder here to show you the format for implementing the macro. The name of the macro is ETR underscore ASCE. And, um, but we, and we have everything we need in terms of weather data, but we do need day of year so we need to do that typical conversion where we're going to convert date over here in column B to day of year here in column AC. And if you recall that formula, it looks like this. All right. Looks like I had a typo. There we go, that got it. So another look at that formula in case you want to see it. B2 minus, and then you call the date and year functions, and that'll give you your day of year. Okay, I can double click here, and it'll fill in the rest of the form. Remember, if this looks odd in your example, for example, uh, and when you do it, remember it's usually caused because this column's got like the date format, right? If you put in like the long date, it'll, it'll wig out. So you need number or general here. Okay. Wind speed. Remember CoAgMet provides wind speed on a daily basis in kilometers per day here in column N. We need that in meters per second. So we need to convert kilometers per day to meters per second. We can do that. Again, that's in column N. So we say N2 multiply by a thousand to get it into meters and divide by the number of seconds in the day. 24 hours, 3600 seconds per hour. There's our wind speed. Double click. Wind speed is now populated. Okay. We're finally ready for this one. ETR. Now we're going to call the macro. Uh, but I guess before we do that, we need to make sure we need to know the latitude and elevation of your site. Remember, you can get that for your location back over on the CoAgMet homepage under Station Index. So for Greeley, 
uh, 4, that's at about 40.45 degrees um, in terms of the latitude, and the elevation is 4,683 4, feet which I needed to convert to meters. So divide this by 3.28 and 4 Greeley. That's about, um, I think it's uh, 1,400. Well, let's just check it. So it was 4,683 divided by 3.28. About 1,428 meters. 1,428 meters. All right. Now I'm ready to call it. So I go up here to the column where I want to work. And I'm going to call this macro. So I'm going to hit equal sign. Once you start typing it, it should appear. And you can double click on it. So there it is, ETR underscore ASCE. I put in my day of year column, which is AC2. My latitude, 40.45 my elevation 1428 my albedo remember for all the ASCE formula we assume an albedo on the reference crop of 0.23 we put in the height of the canopy now I'm just following this list right here uh, vegetation height and canopy resistance are the next two height for the tall crop formula is 0.5 for the short crop formula or grass, it's 0 0.12. Now I put in my canopy resistance. Again, I'm using the tall crop formula in this case. The default resistance for the ASCE formula is 45. Now if you were doing the short crop, that number would be 70. Now we're ready to put in the weather data. Solar radiation. Let's look over here and see where it is. It's in column M. And you'll want to do that for all the others. M2, so the next one after solar radiation, solar radiation is air temperature maximum and min. That's F2 and H2 in this case. And then finally you want, oh wait a minute, That's I think I made a mistake there. Air temperatures are D and F. Alright, I made a little mistake there. D2 and F2 and the vapor pressure is in H2 and finally I need my wind speed in meters per second and that's this adjusted variable over here in AD2. Okay and then I hit return and it should calculate the e reference crop ET in millimeters per day. That looks very reasonable, 7. I can right click on this and that'll populate my values and you can see they're getting up got a few values in the 12s and 10s as my maximums as I get down toward the end of the year into September they get much smaller that's the pattern that we would expect we could plot this if we wanted to real quickly but first let's look over here at our summary table I uh, this is where I used those sum product formulas that we talked about before and got the ET, average ET in millimeters per day for each month. The ET in just total millimeters, so this is the total millimeters of water per month. The precipitation that the site experienced per month in terms of total. And then the difference between ET and precipitation. And this is sort of a giving you a sense for sort of the irrigation requirement. Okay. Now remember, this is all for the reference crop, not for the actual crop. Uh, if you were growing alfalfa, this probably wouldn't be too far off, but if you're growing corn, you'd have to multiply all these, these ET values by the crop coefficient, either the uh, single crop coefficient or the dual use or even one with a stress coefficient, but that's how you would adjust this to get it to an actual ET. Uh, we could plot these real quick. Uh, we can just select these two, say insert bar chart. And here's our plot showing reference ET as a function of month. And we can see here that the biggest month is June, but of course we haven't applied the crop coefficients. So uh, if we would do that, 
probably see bigger numbers in July. It would change the shape of this. So this is just describing the evaporative demand imposed by the atmosphere or by the meteorology. It's not considering how the crop grows over the season or things of that nature, right? And then we could also plot, for example, day of year against uh, the, the uh, calculated reference crop. And we can insert a scatter chart like this. There we see it. Scale's a little off. I'm going to adjust this a little bit. Just demonstrating how you can do this. Um, we want to go from about day 120 to about day 280. And now we're getting a little bit better look at things. Okay and you can see that pattern. Again, really high values in June and that's mainly driven by all the radiation that we have there toward the end of June, beginning of July. But again, the first crops like corn, for example, the crop wouldn't be fully grown. So this shows you how to use this macro, okay, and calculate the reference crop ET fairly easily. Remember, you could ch easily change the crop height and resistance to do the short crop. Be really easy right here. And you could even take data like this and apply a crop coefficient uh, to these numbers to uh, get an actual ET. I might make a second video demonstrating how to do that. But this gives you a nice intro to how to grab that macro and use that to your advantage. Now, the nice thing about this macro is this will work on just about data from any location. So let's say you're working with data from Kansas or Oklahoma or Iowa, Nebraska. You could just download the weather data into this sheet. You'd probably have to reformat the columns, right, and the column headers to their format, but you could still call this uh, function uh, in this way, and it should work 